Well, Rovers, we are just about ready to head to sea. We're, we're, we'll be heading off tomorrow morning, so that's about 18 hours away, but uh, the boat is in great shape. I've, I've spent almost two weeks here in Port Hawkesbury because of the change in plan. You know, initially we were going to go to the Azores. We, we burned through a fair bit of time waiting for that system to uh, pass. It, it didn't pass. We had a red line, and now we're heading to Halifax. We're going to head down the eastern seaboard, and we're going to have, you know, a number of coastal hops that we'll do to get down to Chesapeake Bay uh, by probably uh, mid-October. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the weather that we'll be facing is not ideal. We'll have the weather with us for the first third of the passage. The passage is about 130 miles as the crow flies, but in fact, we'll be probably doing closer to 160, 170 miles on account that the the second two thirds of the passage, the wind is on our nose. So we'll be, we'll be heading out to sea a fair distance and then we'll be coming in on a long tack, uh, trying to use the the, the local winds to our advantage. We'll see how that goes. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover Story. Okay, so uh, I have to get to Halifax and it'll be about 48 to uh, 48 hours to 56 hours, somewhere in there. Can't say for sure on account of these headwinds. I also want to share with you some bad news. Uh, yesterday I received the unexpected news that my mother passed away. So uh, that's another reason I want to get to Halifax. The, that port is a lot more secure because I'll have to leave Wave Rover in a marina that I can, you know, sort of count on. We'll have pretty good protection and fly back to Edmonton for the funeral service. Uh, a very sad time for me, really. But at the end of the day, I have to get back to Wave Rover and carry on on the whole uh, voyage. So, a lot to do, time to crack on. Well, I'm in uh, Tim Hortons right now. I'll be leaving in about half an hour. I'm just here for the free Wi-Fi and I'll show you what the wind situation looks like. Anyway, we have a low pressure system right here and this is right now so I'll be able to come out and maybe even catch a bit of uh, wind on the on the quarter or maybe even a run to get out but 20 or 12 hours later the wind has backed significantly and it's going to be well that'll be pretty good because my plan is to get out quite a distance offshore but then I'll have to, once I get out offshore, then I'll have to start heading in on a bit of a beam reach to Halifax. So instead of the short distance from here to here of about 120, 130 miles, I'll probably be doing more like 160, 170 miles as I do a great big tack. Anyway, that's the plan for now. Local conditions will dictate my actual course. Well, we are seconds away from departure. A small crowd has arrived to see me off. Family.
Well, we've got fog, we've got drizzle, we've got the current against us, and we have the wind against us. What could possibly go wrong? But we do have a plan. We have to transit this straight. It's uh, probably going to take me about three hours of powering into that. And by the time I get into the bay, we should have the wind shifting a little bit and we'll be able to hoist sail and get under sail. Looking forward to it. Anyway, a lot to do, time to crack on. Oh, something else while I'm thinking about it is, uh, even though it's probably 18 degrees Celsius right now, I'm dressed like it is much worse. And the reason is, you don't want to get wet and cold. Hypothermia is always a little thing that uh, you got to keep at the back of your mind when you're on the North Atlantic. Well, Wave Rover has been underway now for about uh, 12 hours. We're clear of land. We just cleared uh, Point Canso probably about half an hour ago. Then the wind really filled in and we're able to make a southerly course under full sail and I, I'm going to show you that right away but I also want to uh, just say that the Mark III is doing the steering. Um, I didn't have it set up for the first passage but this time she's set up and she's doing a marvelous job already. It's uh, such a uh, such a treat to have someone else taking the helm. Anyway, let's head up on deck and take a look. Well, there's the Mark III. She's holding a nice steady course. And we'll just take a look at the compass. That's nice. That's uh, She's steering a better course than I could, I think. Now we'll just take a look at what the environment looks like. We're heeled over nicely. We're heeled over about 10 degrees. Um, can't really say what the wind is. She's not strong. We're probably only blowing about maybe seven or eight knots. We have a nice ocean swell, probably about two meters. I know that it's really deceptive when you see these little action cameras record the weather. It always looks like it's nothing, but I assure you, I've made that mistake looking at other people's um, video and then to realize that it, it's really, it's the camera. It's a, such a short focal length. It doesn't pick up much depth. There's the sail. Doesn't she look grand? We've got fog. We've got about uh, 100 yards visibility. Our AIS is on. We've got absolutely no contacts around us. It's a, it's a beautiful night. It's only about 15 degrees Celsius, but it's just great to be underway on the ocean, out of sight of land. That sail, jeez, just takes my breath away. So, in short, am I happy? Yes, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with Wave Rover. I'm very happy to be back at sea. I'm very happy at this particular time to have my mind focused on the passage and not grieving the death or the passing of my mother, which I will be dealing with just as soon as I get Wave Rover safely to Halifax. But for now, I am absolutely in the moment. Well, Rovers, that was my first night solo on Wave Rover, and now we're going to head up and take a look at that first sunrise. Wow, what a glorious sunrise. What a great night as well. The Mark III did all the steering. And we were, we were close hauled for most of the night. We had about 10 knots and we were making about three and a half to four knots. We're probably about 25 to 30 miles off the coast of Nova Scotia right now. The wind has dropped off probably about two hours ago. So right now we're close hauled and there's that magnificent sail.
even in these light breezes. She looks lovely. So we'll just do a little navigation update here. So um, first of all, I started way back here in Port Hawkesbury, had to clear Shetabucto Bay. Um, most of that was done under motor. Just before we get to this first waypoint, um, that's where we uh, were able to hoist sail. We got a little bit of breeze and we didn't get a lot of breeze. Uh, we got about 10 to 12 knots through the night we were close hauled uh, that's wave rover right there the little triangle and uh we're we're on course we're close hauled right now and we're only making 1.3 knots i just checked the wind with my anemometer and the wind is about four knots four to five knots so this is to be expected we are expecting wind to fill in from the west to uh southwest and that's when you know it's we're going to have to change our sail plan and it's all going to be dependent these tracks were laid in by seahawk the fellow who's doing my uh meteorology and oops let's see if we can get that back uh, he laid these tracks in just as a general guide and uh, the idea was with the wind with the wind um, coming at this angle through most of the night we were able to make this course and when the wind changes to this angle well we're, we're going to alter course and get into Halifax so we'll just see how those conditions uh, actually happen at this point I've been up uh, doing watches most of the night so now I'm just going to hit the hay because Wave Rover is really visible and um, you know it's good weather there's no vessels I'm I'm somewhere between 25 to 30 miles off the coast of Nova Scotia so yeah I'm probably going to put my head down I've got the AIS alarms on and I'll, uh, I'll get caught up in a bit of sleep because I want to be quite active during the night and also I want to be well rested for entrance to Halifax Harbor because I've never actually brought a boat into Halifax Harbor before and uh, you know you've got to you've got you've got to be prepared for anything uh, I'll just close out here with the benefactor's bulkhead. We haven't seen it lately, so. So check to see if your name's on there, if you subscribe to the benefactor's bulkhead. It's closed now, by the way. There's, uh, there was only room for 125 names, and I think that's what we have. I mean, we could squeeze one or two more on, but the problem is, Mrs. Rover isn't here to write them so neatly, so it's uh, the benefactor's bulkhead is now closed. As always, Rovers, remember, forge your own adventure.